20th of January, 1967. Bali. It was a pleasant way to spend a morning, with the chattering children laughing and shouting at the waves. We swam and picnicked. Dolog kept giving me secret smiles and languid glances. Last night he quietly arrived and stayed again, and to my slightly horrified delight, made passionate and expert love. 8th of February 1967, Bali. I hope life will continue forever to offer me delicious surprises like Dolog, and that I will always be delighted and surprised. He goes about the act of love with a charmingly self-possessed grace, gaily, affectionately and enthusiastically. And in these matters he is very inventive and not at all sentimental for all the caresses Donald Friend built this superb tropical house on Sanoa Beach in the 1960s. His art attracted passionate support. But in this film, we raise the difficult subject of Friend's self-confessed pedophilia. By doing so, we reveal the denials and double standards of his supporters. It may be reasonable or unreasonable, but you should not be happy and really enjoy. The whole body of my work is about enjoyment. It's for that reason often and, uh, that he's called the wicked Mr. Friend. <laughs> Donald is a self-declared pederast in his latest diary by saying that he actually had sex with his children, but the, the reality is that they seduced him. But I don't think it's a matter of black and white. I don't think there is a single, a, a hard line dividing the black from the white on the question of pedophilia. I think there's a penumbra. He certainly liked people who were youthful and had youthful energy and enthusiasm. But there, I think there's been some myth-making about Friend and his life. And I don't think that Friend uh, behaved in ways which uh, would attract criticism or much criticism from people today and which, at the time, uh, didn't attract particular criticism either. They were very fortunate. Very fortunate. I mean, he really did train them and was quite strict with it all. He's somebody who should have spent half his life in jail. It's as simple as that. He's an untried criminal. It's really jo Donald's very charismatic nature that makes it so difficult to talk about any of this, and I think that's why a lot of people are fairly loath to say anything bad about him. Sanoa Beach is one of Bali's tourist hubs. Westerners from Europe and Australia still flock here for its beaches, relaxed atmosphere and relatively low cost. In 1967, Donald Friend was already one of Australia's most celebrated artists embraced by his peers within the Australian arts elite. There's only one man in Australia who can draw like this. By going to Bali, Friend was following in the footsteps of a string of Western artists, intellectuals, politicians and celebrities who had made their way to the island since the 1930s. I think the, the whole thing about Westerners in any third world country, it's really not just about colonial relations, but it's also about wealth and poverty. Part of being white in a colonial situation 
was that you had power over people and people wanted access to your influence, to your money. You could live really grandly in Bali. It was very unlike West Africa or, or Sri Lanka, but, but in all of those countries, they had, you know, you were allowed... They liked you to be eccentric, you liked, they liked you to, you know, just own the whole world, really. Donald Friend was born into a wealthy Australian pastoral family in 1915. He has been described as a vivacious boy who from an early age displayed a sensual eye for luxuriant beauty. And a satirical mocking sensibility. Children of his generation were often taught to keep a diary. For most, they were soon forgotten scrapbooks. But in Friend's case, his diary developed into something else. Not just a lifelong habit, but a work of art and a confessional where his inner demons and fatal attractions could be fearlessly articulated. 16 November 1946, Sydney. Get to Bed, you drunken, sentimental moron. It's finished and dead. You've got to get out into the world and run about the face of the earth and find somebody new. A nice, simple black boy. And don't go oozing your saccharine soul sentimentally all over the blameless breasts of the naive heathen. Just go to bed with them. I know all about I've watched Donald write those diaries carefully constructing them. I mean, he'd sit down in the evening and do drawings and then write out his diary and then write it in carefully around the drawings. So it was... I mean, Donald's been writing diaries ever since he was a small boy. In 1987, two years before his death, the talented, charming, irascible, bon vivant Australian artist gave over a lifetime of personal diaries to the National Library of Australia on the condition that the diaries be published. Personally, I was intrigued, not just for the social history, but for the illicit, never-before-published declarations contained in some of the diaries, particularly the Bali diaries, where Friend lived in grand style with as many as 20 adolescent houseboys. From about nine years old up to 20, 25, that sort of thing. And when you wanted to draw from the figure, you'd just look out into the garden and call anybody who looked a bit idle, and they'd pose for you. And this whole thing that I'd always been absolutely besotted with is drawing the human figure. In 2006, the task of editing nearly six decades of daily diary entries was complete. Now, my dear friend, uh, Donald Friend, um, an extraordinary man, and perhaps the most gifted uh, Australian artist in the history of Australian art. This particular book deals with the early Bali period, which is really his halcyon days. Donald Friend's diaries are perhaps the most important diaries written by an Australian in the 20th century. I think few artists have written so persuasively about the creative process. Um, he's up there looking out from the wall at, the, at us and the exhibition, and uh, he really realises that finally his day has come. You know, one had this amazing, rare insight into a person's brain, mind, intention as an artist, as a, as a liver of life, uh, as with no other Australian artist. And I really uh, uh, say to all of you, be sure to get the four volumes. They will delight. And just in parenthesis, they 
By the end of the war in 1945, Donald Friend was 30 and looking towards his future. As an official war artist, he saw action with the invading Allied forces in Borneo and Labuan. But he confided in his diary that the war for the most part had been dreary rather than tragic. Soon after Japan's surrender, he debated his past while contemplating the choices open to him. 19 August 1945. What is one's life going to be? A long, dreary succession of infatuations for handsome sailors, urchins, footballers, or the scrofulous, despicable menace to youth who gets a few years in jug for perverting adolescence, or to give it all up and live like an aesthetic in the desert, tantalised by visions of golden lads. It seems too late in the day to give it all up. In the following decades, Friend travelled widely, alternating between Australian cities, its remote Torres Strait Islands, Europe, Sri Lanka, Africa. But his longest association was with the Indonesian island of Bali. With the endless flexibility and humour of their version of Hinduism, the Balinese accept Donald as a god, calling him Tuan Raksasa, Lord Devil. I have a personal interest in Bali, in particular its children. Through my marriage, my own children are half Balinese. In my time living on Bali, I realised the importance of family and religion in this unique culture. Religion is completely integrated into everyday life. The Balinese do all of this with artistry and style against a beautiful tropical landscape. These rituals exist in contrast to the hedonism Westerners have long brought to the island. From scallywags and near-do-wells and adventurers and down and outs and the idle rich and the beautiful people of the world and it's sort of on the circuit that some of these people do from, from Rio to Goa to Mykonos to Bali and they know each other from these places, the, the beautiful people, the international travellers. A lot of them have money, a lot of them live off their wits, they play backgammon against one another on the beaches and in the bars and whether they win or lose that decides where they might be staying the next day. At best, the notion of Bali as a paradise is a romantic fiction and it has at times masked more sinister, self-serving motives. The artist Walter Spies was the son of a German diplomat. In his 15 years on Bali, he was a primary catalyst in creating the island's popular image. These cultural images began to crystallise in the late 1920s around Spies and his social set. It was during this time that the heiress Barbara Hutton had a swimming pool built for Spies outside his quaint native-style home. He built this house on his friend the Prince Sukhawati's land, and it really did become the central hub of the cool expat set of the 1930s. Everyone from Margaret Mead to Charlie Chaplin, Noel Coward and Barbara Hutton would gather here. But to disturb this tropical oasis, Walter was charged with pederastic crimes by the Dutch administration and jailed in the late 30s. But true to form, his friend Margaret Mead supported him totally in court, saying that the Balinese never knew their correct age anyway. And in this feudal society, the boy's family had no choice whatsoever but to support the prince's friend. Another lover of all things Balinese was the Canadian ethnomusicologist Colin McPhee, who lived on this magnificent ravine overlooking the Ayung River in Sion, Bali. And it was here in the Ayung River 
the Cullen first met the young Sampi. He was then eight years old and an orphan. Sampi had run away from a violent father who had beaten him and his mother. He was living alone in a makeshift hut. McPhee took him into his household and developed him into a highly successful dancer, but he also quickly developed a sexual relationship with him. Colin was infatuated with more than one Balinese boy and along with others quickly fled Bali to avoid what has now become known as the Dutch pedophile trials of the late 1930s. Mead described this period as a witch hunt against homosexuals rather than a prosecution of mass pedophilia on the island. There were actually hundreds of people arrested and many of those, something like uh, 90 of them were convicted of pedophile activities. Margaret Mead shocked the world with her 1928 study of Pacific Islander sexuality, coming of age in Samoa. Despite her work's many flaws, her gullibility not being the least, Mead's work was influential, and her defence of sex with minors, something she described as light relations with Balinese, was destructive. Mead created the mythology of the nice, culturally acceptable pedophile, as distinct from those who are predatory and dangerous. Dan setelah kami membaca ini, saya mulai mikirkan apakah seniman-seniman yang datang di Bali kalau melihat anak-anak yang diajak itu bukan homoseks tetapi pedofil. Dan kami mencoba melihat beberapa lukisan orang Bali, ada memang gambaran yang menyangkut hubungan seks orang dewasa dengan anak, kemudian orang dewasa laki dengan anak laki. Tapi masyarakat tidak ngeh, tidak mengerti dan tidak memikirkan hal ini. Pedophilia was one of many issues confronting the Balinese. The only Hindu province of the world's largest Muslim nation endured great suffering during the 20th century. Thousands died in the Dutch invasion and massacres of 1908, followed by Japan's brutal occupation during World War II and an even worse anti-communist purge by the Sukarno regime in the mid-1960s, where official agencies estimate up to 80,000 Balinese died. Fathers, brothers, heads of families were murdered. Communities were torn apart and many children were left to fend for themselves and each other in a struggle for survival. In this environment, it was easy for Donald Friend to set up a large household of young workers, excited by the few repair of salary and presents he gave. Even if you knew that when you went home, you might have made all these bitchy remarks behind your back. Still, it was he was really a great person to be in the company of, and uh, he was a fabulous host. He, you know, sit sit you down, and um, whatever was at hand, he'd uh, you know pour you a bottle of wine and talk for ages and ages. I first came to know of Donald Friend not through his art, but through local gossip in Bali. On the one hand, I heard of his generosity, the merriment of the in-crowd of expatriates who grouped around him, the star-studded parties. On the other hand, I heard of his alcohol fueled rages, orgies and sexually exploitative ways towards his many houseboys. I've been interviewing people for several years now who also have an intimate knowledge of the diary's contents, and it's clear they have developed a rationalisation for friends' behaviour that enables them to deny the artist's candid admissions. 30th of December 1946. Young C and Y were very amusing. A certain amount of very hilarious and innocently animal horseplay of an erotic nature, which later in the evening, when we went for a walk to the deserted teacher's house, became something of an orgy. 
No inhibitions at all about a little session of sodomy. I think you'll find that um, I, 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 there's this belief that he was a pedophile. I think that has to be resisted. Um, I certainly have not scoured all the evidence yet by any means, but from the evidence I pick up in the published diaries at least, there seems to be very little evidence of, 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 of the kind of interest in, in younger boys that we associate with paedophilia today. In terms of his expression of himself, he didn't see himself as being limited by what we might think of as conventional Judeo-Christian values. And what do you say, um, because there are some people who say that, that he was sexually exploiting the boys, what do you think about that? No. I think they gain more than, I mean, I really don't know. I never saw any evidence and I really, I think he just liked the, the young company about. After all, as he said, they're easier to draw and they're more delightful. Maybe now, because of all the attention that's given to this sub sort of subject, one would be more um, conscious of it in a way. But it just seemed that he was an artist and that was how artists lived and this was all part of the ambience and environment that he created around him. Are you, in retrospect, angry with him? I'm not angry with him, no. Uh, I don't get angry with anybody about what they do privately. Um, No, I'm not angry with him at all. I'm not surprised. Uh, his admissions in the diary are designed for people to read, and they are very honest descriptions of episodes in his life that uh, excited him or suited him. There's no word the opposite of the terrorist where the young boy seduces the older man. Or we should be. The children seduce him? I don't think so. I think again back to the, you have to remember in Bali, our country, we have to be nice to the tourists. I'm sure the tourists seduced them. Why do you think that he was not afraid about describing some of his sexual relationships which would be considered highly immoral? I don't consider Donald's sexual interest to be highly immoral. Donald like was a homosexual and he liked young men. No, I'm not really talking so much about the um, older teenagers that he went out with, but he does explicitly writing the diaries about having sex with children in Bali. Well, Bali. I don't think, I don't think, I, I have no, never read in the diaries that he has having sex with children. He might have, he may, he may have had a relationship with sort of um, late teenagers, but not, not, if he had been a, what people some often think of as a pedophile, a pedophile is someone who prays from beginning to end for children, for, for children who are under, say, 12, they like him six or seven, nine or something like that. Donald had no interest in anyone who couldn't speak back to him or, or had a, a character of his own. Those people are predators who, who are just like, like, they may as well go with dogs or can, uh, animals. They're just having, they're, they're ill. Made Lambon was 16 when he lived in Donald Friend's household. Budi kutang yop dala. 28th of November 1968. Before I went to bed, I made them sing for me for half an hour. Pantums, which are a form of song often used for comments on the day's situations. Lambon has a beautiful voice. Manis, makita, mangonyang, onyang. To a dear and tamu, dan menyanyi, dan pukul gamalan. Oh, pukul gamalan. Punap. Kita close yang ternyak pok, pati motawang dia ke kecut dia kena close hold dia yang minum, terlakar yang jauh tidur. Takut kena kena panulah ya kecut, sebab sebab minum abu ya kecut, nona lah ya takut dia. Okay, 
Tapi begitu, ni ada nak kira ada tanaman tiang nado. Tapi tu tu yang yang kita buat nado tiang tanaman macam ni kan? Bukan kolah nak kentan kentan. Ni ni anu tiang tu ada berat tu ni sayang ni anu tu yang bakat ke tuat tu tawang tiang tu. Nadi Gato ni ko nak ngal rangapur pak kelian kelian pak kumang, nana kita lah ada pak Nadi Gato ni ko tinggal jaga ke kamar nana mundo ke ya tu. Donald Friend was the only father figure that the sweet and cute orphan child Mudde Brata ever really knew. Twenty ninth of April, nineteen sixty nine. All of the other boys from the same village are leaving, but I refuse to let little Made Brata go, and fear they will put some pressures on him, or even kidnap him. Sebelumnya saya pengembala sapi. Setelah dilihat sama Mr Donald Friend, saya jadi pengembala sapi. Dia ingin angkat saya tinggal bersama dia sebagai anak, tidak bekerja, tidak bekerja. Terus Mr Donald Friend juga merasa kasihan saya tidak sekolah. Saya diberikan fasilitas sekolah di Sanur selama enam tahun. Betul. Waktu itu memang uh, saya uh, tidak punya orang tua, uh, seperti uh, bapak juga sudah hilang dan ibu saya kawin lagi. Itu. Uh, kalau saya tidur uh, di tempat Tuan Donovan, tidak apa-apa. Kalau dia mau. Uh, sama orang lain kalau orang itu tidak mau dia tidak uh, tidak mau keras tidak mau memaksa tapi uh, uh, atas permintaan dia gitu datang uh, di kamar saya uh, setelah saya kerja sampai saya pensiun saya tidak ketemu sama Donald Friend Kenapa saya tidak bisa ingat? Nama adik saya Madi Brata. Waktu waktu itu dia masih masih kecil kurang lebih dia berumur uh, 10 tahun. Kalau kurang baiknya beliau dulu saya kalau tidak salah kurang lebih lebih tahun 67 saya bekerja sama adik saya di sana dan malamnya saya tidur sama adik saya. Adik saya pernah di, di, di diambil oleh beliau mau diajak ke kamar tidurnya beliau. Terus saya sendiri sudah curiga beliau itu senang uh, ngisap-ngisap orang kecil gitu uh, dan sa terus saya melapor sa uh, sama pemuda Batu Jimar uh, pemuda tersebut sekian banyaknya uh, membantu saya mencari Tuan Donal uh, sampai saya di depan rumah uh, kamarnya tidur Tuan Donal beliau itu keluar membawa keris jadi saya lari tunggang langang sama pemuda pemuda batu jimar. Niko nak nak tengah lapor ni niko kan nak tunggu polisi polisi dek kau kau niko dan apa yang tinggal ada yang ternyata kendan kau niu kau nak pon terpelik pak tinggal. Niko lihat kan niko tuan wanita yang pak. Tanya nan salah anu nyan nan. Mondot yang. One story I've heard from. Two or three different sources about after one of these wild parties, a, a young boy was badly injured by, uh, you know, through sex, and uh, that then the, the police were going to intervene, and he was actually 
physically removed from the island, like thrown out by the police. Because it's a difficult situation, you know, and where we have to be nice to the tourists, we, we are not like in the West, yeah. You can tell your kid or your children, do not talk to the stranger, but here we are very, anyone can talk to our children. I met Dolog, who was the subject of several drawings and journal entries, not far from where Donald Friend first met him on Sanoa Beach. 8th of February 1967. Dolog spent the night with me. I hope life will continue forever to offer me delicious surprises like Dolog, and that I will always be delighted and surprised. Such ideas I am unwise to confess, even here in this book. Saya bertemu Tuan Donald Fenn sekitar umur 10 tahun di Tanjung Sari Hotel. Ah, ini agak marah karena tidak minta izin semasa saya bikin buku ini seks seksual ini tidak saya tidak belum pernah main seksual ini. Saya kira lukisan-lukisan yang lukisan dijual, lukisan. ya mungkin malu, mungkin sedunia, mungkin se-Indonesia, saya orang tahu ini kalau tahu dia kan, saya yang gelet di rumah saya sendiri. Apa bilang nanti kan, bilang supaya jangan diterbitkan lagi ya, supaya jangan diterbitkan lagi. Tidak ada, karena tidak ada perempuan dengan saya, itu tidak tahu. Kalau banyak orang tahu kan mungkin saya, Sama-sama set seperti yang nanti ya. Ya, supaya jangan dia menerbitkan buku-buku yang begini lagi ya. Ini kalau bisa dihapuskan inilah. I do know that the diary publishers went to great lengths to ask permission to use sensitive diary entries, yet Dolog and other Balinese were never approached. Oh, the National Library were very good with, every, with everybody who was mentioned in Donald's diary. I mean, they came and approached and asked if, if I would mind reading the material. So, Wherever I'm mentioned, they have always sent all the material to me. I remember on one on one uh, diary when I was ha having the drinking problem, <laughs> I said I read it all, and I said. Oh, you put it all in, but so just cut out one of them, she drunk again. <laughs> I thought it was too repetitive. So well, cut out one. Well, that was very nice of them. Um, I know, Margaret Salento wouldn't have be quoted at all. In part, Bali's repressive history, combined with the persisting feudal mindset of the Balinese, mean that they are fearful of saying anything that will put them on the wrong side of authority. So the fact that Centre, Lambon and Dolog have spoken so openly and critically is significant. And there's certainly a racist notion that has been held for so long that Asian boys or girls are very sexual, so therefore the Western predator can go over there and, and have easy sex because it's acceptable. Now clearly that is nonsense. It's also part of a, a delusion whether it's a sex tourist or a pedophile. They're going there because there is easy access to children. Children are poor, they can pay 50 cents a dollar to have sex. Up until the 70s, people were still marrying very young. In those situations, though, it was like teenage boys marrying teenage girls. 
we're not talking about 50 year old men marrying 13 year old girls. But there's a it's difference a very... between having sex at eight or nine, having sex with a oh, 50, 60 year old man, absolutely. to absolutely. even at 14, having sex with a 50 year old man, if it was a little boy or even if they're girls. It depends so much on their own background. I mean, some of these kids are incredible. These kids that I was telling you about on Saturday, which are beach kids, they've mm. seen everything. Mm. They're streetwise, they're beachwise. I don't come from a puritanical point of view at all. But you come you from know. a Christian society. Mm. And you, uh, you, we all assume those things because of the culture we grow up in. But I've actually kept up with a couple of his ex-servants or houseboys who are now, one of them's grey-haired. Uh, I don't think, um, I don't think a psychiatrist would say that they're damaged goods. They've, they've all married and had children. After I work in hypnotherapy, I found a lot of my patients get a bad experience when they were child. And this is will influence them to become mental disorder. Because when they were child, they never talk about their experience and they difficult for them to tell the parent and other people. This is a fishing village in East Bali and is one of the poorest communities on the island. Over the last few years, we have been collectively appalled to find that this is a major pedophile base, and the number of prosecutions coming out of this area alone is disastrous. It's prison for pedophile offences. While the law treats artists no differently from other citizens, it is true that the excesses of some have been tolerated since the Renaissance. 6th of September, 1946. The holy name. The diaries have continued to be widely promoted. The Southeast Asian launch of the diaries and an exhibition of Friends' work were held as part of the Ubud Writers' Festival in Bali. It was a festive occasion, remembering and lauding Friend as a great raconteur, diarist and artist. The Australian ambassador to Indonesia, Bill Farmer, had no qualms lending his presence to the launch, despite the original press release referring to Donald Friend as a self-described middle-aged pederast who's going to seed. Laurie, Terence, ladies and gentlemen, let's enjoy ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> One would expect the Australian diplomatic service to be, well, diplomatic. In 2004, a former Australian diplomat, William Brown, suicided in a Balinese jail after being sentenced to 13 years prison for pedophile offences. While the law treats artists no differently from other citizens, it is true that the excesses of some have been tolerated since the Renaissance. 6th of September, 1946. The holy names of the great pederasts of the spirit. Ah, me. Ah, me. Then the chanted litanies of self-justification. It is really quite natural, especially with intellectuals and artists. Think of Leonardo and all the rest of them. My private mumbled prayer, half excuse and half manifesto, goes up to the god of inverts. I am so. If I resist, I am sent mad. If I indulge, I am still unhappy. Then grant me as much love as possible, and I'll do my best not to harm anyone. Raising the subject of pedophilia is difficult at any time. There is a fear of inciting mob hysteria, but on the other side, Charging the art world with double standards invites being accused of being part of a conservative backlash against the arts. This is despite, even with his health failing, Friend himself having no problems alluding to his pedophilia. 
Then there comes a moment, you know, when you really can't get all the beautiful nudes that you want because you've got so bloody old and your physical energies, sexual energies, is rather fading and all that, you know. And uh, one has to find some way or other to keep your dignity. You can't be chasing models all over the bloody place and say, take off your pants, you know. Uh, you get into great trouble like that. And, and you look ridiculous. You lose dignity as a human being. Since I've been back in Australia, I've been looking at the models and all the rest of it. And then my eyes turned to the greengrocers. And I see the mango and the banana, you know? And I think, my Christ, it's a solution, isn't it? They don't give nearly as much trouble as those lovely young nudes I used to like. <laughs> And they all, they all have, uh, or they can be given, the sort of values of desire in a painting. Mangolinia. <laughs> Mangophilia. <laughs> yeah. As Friend's paranoia increased, so did his notoriety. And he finally lost the protection of his Indonesian supporters when the stories of his merry house parties and sex with boys became more than just titillating gossip. He's forced to get out from the country. Um, uh, some people, you know, uh, accused him of, a, um, of, of misbehave himself for uh, maybe sexuals or, or, or having a relations with the boys. Friends sold up and left Bali in 1980, never to return. He died in Sydney, Australia in 1989, a bitter man, still lauded by the broader arts community, but alienating and disinheriting his closest friends and family. Donald Friends extremely lucky. He's somebody who should have spent half his life in jail, as simple as that. He's an untried criminal, uh, absolutely guilty according to his own written word. He, if he, as he says himself, he, if he'd lived in Australia while he was carrying on like this, he would have ended up a scrofulous, despicable old man spending the last years of his life in jail. And you were right, Donald. And what of Bali? Its fortunes continue to fluctuate. After the 2002 Sari nightclub bombing, which killed over 200 people, tourists slowly began to return. But its child sex tourism problem has continued unabated. Indonesia is now rated the third largest destination for pedophiles, and Bali is one of the worst affected provinces. Yet there are still the sunsets and the beaches. And if you close your eyes and mind, the past can disappear. Such ideas I am unwise to confess. Even here in this book, I think anyone that is excusing a child sex offender really needs to think about their own children and the protection of their own children and what it would mean if someone abused their own children. I'm sure they would protect them. I'm sure they wouldn't let it happen. Child became something of an orgy. No inhibitions at all session of 